What I'm hearing is that all throughout the 1920s into the 1930s, when she becomes First Lady, right. Eleanor is really supported by and participates in and supportive of the kinds of activities that progressive women have been involved in since the turn of the century. Absolutely, absolutely. And continue to be. I mean, um, <clears throat> Jane Addams and Lillian Wald are regular visitors to um, the White House. Indeed, the year of her death, Jane Addams dies in 1935. Um, Eleanor Roosevelt has a big international radio broadcast to celebrate Jane Addams and her work. Um, and then Lillian Wall dies in 1940, and Eleanor Roosevelt, when she's not well at all, Eleanor goes to visit her, and they're in constant communication. And, and one of the ways in which they influenced her forever is by the creation in 1934 of this amazing community in Arthurdale, West Virginia, which is a mining company. And her friend Hick, Lorena Hickok, who's working for the FERA, is on a tour. Lorena Hickok Lorena is the journalist is the by journalist profession. By profession. And she's on a tour for the Federal Emergency Relief Administration to see how bad things really are, a fact-finding tour. And she writes to Eleanor Roosevelt, you want to see the worst place in America, come on down here to West Virginia and see how these miners are living. They're living in shacks and in coal mines and in culverts mm -hmm. and they're living, you know, I mean, they are basically homeless. Mm -hmm. And Eleanor Roosevelt goes down and says, we're going to build a new community. And this new community, which people really should go down and look at, is the most amazing thing. She builds it with electricity and hot and cold running water in every single house. And this is when 80% of rural America does not, not have, have electricity, electricity right. or hot and cold running water. And Harold Ickes, who's a good guy, the Secretary of Interior, calls up FDR and says, do you know what your wife is doing down there? Mm -hmm. She's spending money like a drunken sailor. But where does she get the money from? And where does she get the authority to spend the money? Um, she, well, some of it comes from the emergency housing Housing's relief, but then she calls her friends, Bernard Baruch. And Bernard ah. Baruch goes down and he helps her build the schools. He helps her build all kinds of amenities. And Bernard Baruch and his pals, you know, this great international financier, help her raise money for Arthurdale, but it's a federal program. So how, how do you account for the fact that when we think about the New Deal per se, we don't really think about Eleanor being involved in it, and yet she seems to have her fingers in the pie. Well, she really is involved in it, and if you read my book, In All Your Modesty, <laughs> Volume 1 and Volume 2, it's really, she, especially about housing, whether it's housing in Washington to get rid of the terrible blight of Washington housing um, and or housing in Arthurdale. And, and Arthurdale is only one of about 50 communities um, all over the country. Eleanor Roosevelt helps to build and campaigns for model communities in which people have electricity, decent places to live, hot and cold running water. And she does this on her own, as it were. In she other words, it. with presumably with the imprimatur of her husband, but right. not necessarily asking for permission. No, she, she does it on her own with her friends and this great movement. I mean, Esther Lape is part of it, but the vision and the origins of the vision, I mean, it starts with, we need settlement houses, we need communities. We need to have decency. And Ellen Roosevelt actually says when Harold Dickies attacks her and says she's wasting money, um, she says something like, nothing is too good for human beings who need hot and cold running water. It's not, we're not going to save money off their misery. And that's 
That's her argument. So here you're talking about a larger theme in Elena's life, that is the social justice theme that seems to run all the way through her life and is in some sense, would I be correct in saying this is her work, that she imagines her work as bringing or expanding the sphere of social justice? Well, this really is her work. She travels around the country and around the world with two questions. Tell me, what do you want? What do you need? Mm. She never tells people, this is what you want, let me tell you. It's never top down. It's always, tell me, what do you want? What do you need? And then we need to build a movement to make it happen. 